Hello everyone, I'm so glad to have you this very moment and I welcome you to my channel. If this is your first time of coming, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that when I release more videos, you will be a part of it. I want to welcome you once again to class. Today, we are going to be looking at system, the meaning of system and the types of system. But before we proceed with the class, we are going to look at the objectives for this lesson. What are the objectives that we seek to achieve for this lesson? Number one, we should be able to know at the end of this lesson, what is a system. We should be able to explain what a system is. We should be able to know what are the properties of a system. We should also be able to explain the characteristics of a system. And we should be able to give the different types of system. So, we now proceed with the very first objective of this lesson, which is what is a system. The word system is derived from the Greek word referred to as systema and that word simply means an organized relationship between any set of components to achieve some common cause or objective. A system can also be defined as an orderly grouping of independent components linked together according to a plan to achieve a specific goal. System can also further be defined as a collection of interrelated and interacting components that work together to achieve a goal. Furthermore, we can also see system as the combination of people, machines, software and hardware to create a functional hood towards achieving a particular objective. One common definition about this system in all of these definitions that we are giving is that system comprises of components. Every system comprises of components and every system is made to achieve a goal or an objective. So we now move. What are the properties of a system? One of the properties of a system is organization. What is organization? Organization simply implies structure and order. Organization can also be referred to as the arrangement of components that help to achieve some predetermined objective. So when we talk about a system being organized, we are talking about that system having structure, interacting with each other to achieve a particular or predetermined objective. Another property of a system is interaction. We have said in our definition of a system that a system comprises of different components and these components, they must interact with each other. They must operate with each other. Take for instance, in a, an organization, you have different segments of the organization. You have the purchasing, you have the supply, you have the store and so on and so forth. Each of these components must work for the good of the organization to ensure that the organization achieve its goal. The number three, properties of a system is interdependence. What is interdependence? Interdependence simply means how the components of a system depend on one another for proper functioning. How each of these components depend on each other to produce a desired goal. These components are coordinated and linked together so that they can help to achieve this particular goal. Don't forget that the output of one particular unit will also be the input of another unit, which will further be the output of another unit. So by so doing, these different parts of the system are interdependent on each other towards achieving that particular goal. Another property of the system is integration. What is integration? Integration simply means how components of these systems are connected together. It means these systems, they are connected together depending on each other and working in line with each other to ensure that each of these systems perform a unique function towards achieving the overall goal of the organization. So, by integration, we also mean that the part of the system, they are working together within the system towards ensuring that the desired goals of the organization, they are achieved. Another property is a central objective. The objective of every system must be central. It must be stated, each organization should be aware, each component, each unit, each department should be aware of the central objective of the organization. And so, each unit will be working towards ensuring that central objective of the organization. By so doing, each unit will not begin to work on their own towards achieving their own objective, but rather working for the central and the overall good of the organization. So having dwelt on these properties 
we move over to the characteristics of a system. What are the characteristics of a system? Some authors will also tell you that these characteristics can also be regarded or seen as part of the components or things that make up the system. So what are the characteristics of a system? The characteristics of a system vary depending on the aspect you are looking at, at it from or depending on the point at which you are looking at it. But there are some basic characteristics that all systems should have and some of these basic characteristics have been stated here. Number one is inputs and outputs. Every organization must receive input and produce output. By input, what do we mean? We simply mean information that enters into the system for processing. Then output is the outcome of the processing and the main aim of every system is to produce an output which is desirable or useful for the user. So every system must have inputs and outputs. Another characteristic of the system is processor. What is a processor? A processor is the element of the system that involves the actual transformation of the input into the output. It is also referred to as the operational component of the system. They modify the input either partially or totally in such a way that the output meets specification towards achieving organizational goal. Then the other characteristics we are going to be looking at is control. What is control? Control element guides the system. The control element is the decision-making subsystem that controls the pattern of activities, governing inputs, processing, and output. The control guides the inputs, the processing, and the outputs. And that control, to a large extent, alters or coordinates the behavior of the system in such a way that the input is being processed to get the output to towards achieving organizational goal. So there must be the control element to ensure that the organization achieve its organizational goal. Another characteristic we are going to be looking at is the feedback. We have two types of feedback. We have the positive feedback. We have the negative feedback. The positive feedback is that type of feedback that encourages the performance of the system. The type of feedback that goes a long way to show that the output is being processed in line with specification. However, the negative feedback is informational in nature and helps to provide the controller with information for action. What we are trying to say here is this. The positive feedback tends to show that the input being processed to get the output is producing the desired result. But the negative feedback is showing that, look, there is something wrong with the output, which means there must be need for an action which can be corrective to ensure that that output being processed meets the specification desired. Another characteristic we shall be looking at is the environment. The environment is the external element that strikes the system. Sometimes it is referred to as the super system which an organization operates. This environment determines how a system must function. It determines to a large extent how this system will work to produce outputs towards achieving organizational goal. So the environment is very very important. It's an important characteristic in a system. The last characteristic we shall be looking at in this class today is boundaries and interface. Boundaries are limits that identifies its components, processes, an interrelationship when it interfaces with another system. Each system has boundaries that determines its sphere of influence and control. A system must be defined by its boundaries. There must be limits. As long as it interfaces with other subsystems, there must be a limit or a boundary. So these are the characteristics of a system. We go over it again. The input and output, the processor, the control, the feedback, the environment and boundaries and interface. Having said that, we shall move forward to the types of system. Systems are divided into various forms or classes depending on the variables for classification, depending on how the classifier has chosen to classify these variables. But for the sake of this class, we are going to look at the various types of system. Number one, we shall be looking at the physical or abstract system. When we talk about physical system, we are talking about tangible entities, what we can touch and feel. Physical system may be static 
or dynamic in nature. So those physical parts that we can feel, we can see, all those systems that have physical parts, we can refer to them as physical system. Why the abstract system are the non-physical entities or they are conceptuals like models, formulas, representation of a real system in an abstract form. We refer to those as abstract system. Why the ones we can feel, the ones we can touch, they are referred to as the physical system. Another type or classification is open and closed system. Every system must interact. So when a system is open to interaction with its environment, we say such system is an open system because that system must receive inputs and deliver outputs to the outside of the system. So it receives input from the environment and processes it and also still transfer or delivers such outputs to the outside of the system. So open system is that type of system that interacts with its environment. Why a closed system is a system that does not interact with its environment. It is isolated from environmental influences. Permit me to say that in reality, a closed system is rare because every system must have one form of interaction either partially or wholly with its environment but for the purpose of classification we have taken it this way so we have another type of system which is adaptive and non-adaptive system adaptive systems respond to changes in the environment in a way to improve their performances to survive human beings they can adapt adaptive features are developed to ensure that that particular system survives in that environment while non-adaptive system does not respond to changes in the environment and non-adaptive systems sometimes are usually machines they are not made to respond except being triggered except being automated to respond or except be given instructions through codes or programs to respond okay we have another type of classification which is the permanent and temporal system when we talk about the classification of permanent and temporal this has to do with period of time so when we talk about the permanency or temporal nature of a system we are talking about this classification being based on time so a permanent system is a system that persists for a long time for instance, organizational business policies, they persist for a long time, especially those policies that are taken at the highest level of administration. Why a temporary system? Is that system that is made for a specific time after which such systems go into extinction? Such systems that are made to respond to immediate issue. So, by another way of redefining it, we can say the permanent system is a long run system why the temporary system is a short run system we have other classification of the system we have the natural and manufactured system natural systems are created by nature for example like the solar system seasonal system they are created by nature it does not derive any input from man however the manufactured system is mammoth system. systems these are systems created by man for example uh, rockets uh, computer system and so on and so forth they are manufactured systems. then we have another type of system classification which is deterministic and probabilistic system this is another type of classification when we talk about deterministic system we are saying that such system can operate in a predictable manner with sanctity such system can operate in a predictable manner with certainty. For example, when you, to a large extent, you can determine that by the time this input is transferred into the system and being processed, the output must surely be this. With certainty, you can say such a system is deterministic. However, probabilistic systems are systems that are unknown. You cannot determine the output. The output is uncertain. So when you cannot determine the output with certainty, you say such a system is a probabilistic uh, system. The last system we shall be looking at today is the social system, human machine system, and the machine system. These are three types of systems that we have combined. When we talk about the social system, we are talking about the system 
that is made of people your social clubs your society and so on and so forth so those are social system then when we talk about the human machine system we are talking about a system that has a combination of both man and machine being made to perform a particular task for instance computer programming you need a man to write the codes, to draw the programming, and to instruct the computer to operate and produce a particular output, which is a computer program. In such cases, we say that kind of system is classified as a human machine system. And the last there we have is the machine system. This is where human interference is neglected. There is no human interference. All the tasks are performed by the machine. For instance, like your robots and some artificial intelligence being used in various parts of the world. Those are machine systems in such a way that the system operates without the interference of humans. Let me also stress at this juncture that there can be an interloping classification. By that, I mean a system that is open or closed can also be adaptive or non-adaptive. A system that is permanent can also be natural or manufactured. So, depending on the variables you have used to classify this system. So, with that, we come to the end of the class today. I hope you have enjoyed the class and I thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and I need your comment. Go to the comment section and send your comments so that I can know on how to give more videos as it relates to system and areas of system that has to be covered. I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in another class. Thank you very much.